All right, everybody, main event time. Smash the like button, jump in the comments, leave your best bet down below on the show. Israel Adesanya taking on Alex Pereira, the man who has faced him, defeated him, knocked him out previously. We're talking narratives, Liam. The UFC has set this one up. It's been a year of us knowing full damn well that one of these days Alex Pereira was going to challenge for Israel Adesanya's title. We knew it was coming. And Alex Pereira has fought way better than I ever expected on his way up to this title fight. I am guilty of trying to fade the UFC narrative and bet against him once or twice. Um, I thought the wrestling, if Sean Strickland was smart enough <laughs> to go for it, would have been a path to victory there. We uh, should have known full damn well that the wild man would never engage as something as uh, irreputable as grappling in that spot. Um, and Bruno Silva gave him a bit of a fight. That was entertaining. That was a good back and forth fight. Showed that he could go, you know, 15 minutes. This is going to be a technical fight. Every single UFC fight that I have seen Israel Adesanya in has been him trying to style his opponents, trying to find the uh, gaps in their game. He reminds me very much of George St. Pierre, where he will find that one little tiny chink in the armor, and then he will just abuse it over and over and over. That's what he does. And sometimes it's boring as shit, but he's still got the belt on at the end of the day. That's Israel Adesanya for you. Now, he knew this was coming. He's known damn well this was being set up by the UFC, so it's not like... You know, he hasn't been watching and preparing for Alex Pereira in this matchup. You go back and you watch their last couple fights. You know, that first one, that was very competitive. You know, the one that went to decision. Israel Adesanya had some very good moments in that fight. Now, obviously, he got starched in the second one, and we know what that left hand of Alex Pereira can do. Um, Got to wonder if Izzy has any intention of bringing the grappling game to bear here. Usually, he's the one defending it, but you know he's been working it this whole time, preparing for wrestlers that may challenge him on the mat. Uh, it would be interesting to see Israel Adesanya kind of flip the script here and take this fight to the ground where not many people would expect him to go. But I, I would love to hear your thoughts on this fight, Liam, because this is one where I just want to watch, frankly. I, I kind of want to bank on the fact that Israel Adesanya is a young star he seemingly is still improving his championship mindset. He's a guy that's built to stay on top of the mountain. He's never getting a little too far over his skis. He doesn't give his opponents any opportunities to win. I like that in a champion. And I think we could see Izzy Rain for a very, very long time. If anybody's going to get the better of him and knock him out, it would be somebody like Alex Pereira. I will tell you guys, you know, the show is sponsored by Superbook. They feed me some of the info, and I try to pass that along where I can. The only sharp action they've taken so far, and it's way early, so we'll get more info by Friday. We're going to do a sharp action report uh, with Superbook on Friday again for this big pay-per-view card. The only sharp action they've taken on this card so far, though, is their number one gambler, and he took Alex Pereira months ago when they opened up the line. So just for your info, that's something that has happened. Liam, talk to me about this matchup. Who do you think is keeping the belt on Saturday? Oh, this is a tough fight to call. You know, um, some of the fights on the card I feel more confident about than others. This is one of the ones that, you know, I'm probably going to be kicking around all week, right? And the line sort of reflects that as well. You know, there's a lot that goes into this matchup. You know, 4X the experience stands out to me in professional mixed martial arts, right? We're talking about two guys that come from a kickboxing background, but the younger man in this fight has 4X the experience of the older gentleman here. But is that the whole story? It's obviously not the whole story, right? We see, you know, Poetan comes out there. Sean Strickland's been around the game for a long time. You know, people will forget that he actually has a very good jiu-jitsu background. Um, but, you know, he wasn't able to bring any of that to bear. The fight was over pretty quick. He got hit with some hard shots. And this is the thing that, you know, when I look at the matchup, I see one guy who has found his footing in the UFC who really has only lost to somebody who was able to stifle his kicking game and take him down uh, and get on top of him, wear him out, take away some of that explosivity, make him a little bit more hesitant to go. And he might be a little hesitant to go in this fight. You know, we have seen Izzy give up these close, uh, you know, decisions where somebody swings at him with big power, maybe lands, connects, clips him a little bit, and he starts to you know, take a little bit of a backseat in the fight where he's still, you know, edging out the rounds with some leg kicks, some, uh, you know, smaller maneuvers, but he really hasn't set these decisive victories apart in all of his fights. But then when he's had somebody who wanted to engage him, 
who wanted to attack him, who wanted to get after him. He's normally beat the hell out of those guys. You know, um, I think of the Paulo Costa fight. Obviously, that one is a really bad look, but even some of the other fights where guys have been more aggressive, Whitaker the first time before he uh, had been knocked out, felt a lot more confidence to come forward. People will forget as well. He dropped Whitaker in the second fight, and then Whitaker sort of started to, you know, take a little bit of the backseat there and was content to let it be a close fight and let the chips fall where they may. And um, I don't see Alex doing that. You know, I see Alex coming forward and trying to force a fight on this guy and swinging him. And that might be to his detriment. You know, that that actually might be what gets him hurt and finished here because Izzy on the counter is very sharp and he hits very hard. And it's not like he got blown out of the water when these two guys kickboxed. It was very competitive. It was back and forth. The death touch is a real thing. And Alex Pereira seems to have it. But then you look at the fact that, you know, MMA, it's such a cruel mistress, right? We all think we know something until Alex Pereira can go out there and go to a 15-minute decision with Bruno Silva and then Gerald Mearshart KOs him like he's freaking, uh, you know, uh, prime uh, freaking Muhammad Ali or something. Like, it's just, it's a, it's a tricky sport to figure out. But I think that when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at a guy who's got a lot more experience. He's got more experience at the UFC level. He's a high-level striker, so he's got all those skills. He's an Andre Galvao purple belt, so he's very well-versed on the ground. I don't think he's going to get you know, surprised by something from Poetan on the ground that Glover Teixeira teaches him. So it really just comes down to the physicality and how wise is Izzy. Because I think if Izzy goes out there and has an ego battle and stays on the feet the whole time, Maybe it gets clipped. You know, this is going to be closer to that 50-50 line. But I think if Izzy mixes up the martial arts a little bit, pushes this guy against the fence, gets a hold of him, takes his back, he might create some uh, pressure and some fatigue and, and really get some doubt in his mind by forcing him into places he's not comfortable. Izzy, on the other hand, has been in some of those transitions for better and for worse. And he's threatened a lot of guys who are theoretically better wrestlers and grapplers on paper with his submission attempts and with his uh, scrambles but he's also put himself in vulnerable positions. You'll remember Marvin Vittori, if he didn't completely spaz out, had his back as, as much as taken. So I think that both these guys are imperfect, but the guy who's further along in his development and a little bit younger is Israel Adesanya. He is the one who called for this fight. Um, and I do think Pereira is the trickiest matchup for him in the division because he's got to navigate it on the feet. But right now I'm going to have to take uh, Israel Adesanya, hesitantly, somewhat reluctantly. I tried to bet even Jared Cannonier against this guy. Um, so I've been looking for my chance, but every time I bet against him, he blanks the guy I bet on. So I just got to start uh, putting a little bit more respect on his name. I think he's maybe a generational talent here, but either way, his biggest challenge to date. So haven't parted way with any of my dollars, but leaning towards Israel Adesanya at this point in the week. There haven't been many guys recently, Liam, that I've been able to just absolutely pinpoint and ride to the bank as long as guys like Israel Adesanya I've had luck with. Uh, most of my uh, hype, most of my guys get derailed pretty early on, and it turns out I'm wrong. I've been pretty lucky on Izzy. I I've been with Izzy all the way to the bank on almost all of his fights that have had a bettable price tag on them. The one time I took a shot against him um, was Marvin Vittori. I, I thought Vittori might be the guy who could pull off the uh, kind of grappling offensive game and have the strength that he would need to uh, derail Israel Adesanya as champion. But that's the only one ever since then. I've been on the easy side. So I'm off that train until I absolutely have to because I'm with you. I think he's a generational talent. I think that he'll hold his own on the feet. He'll show more to more, keep himself ahead of the game here. And just find a way to win, because that's what he does. You know, I don't know if it's going to be by finish. I don't know if it's going to be by decision. But I think Israel Adesanya, at the end of the day, will find his path to victory here and get the dang thing done. I don't mind the knockout, because like you mentioned, the counters are going to be there. And if this turns into a uh, an emotional rematch, <laughs> I could absolutely see this getting heated, having the intensity ramped up, and then regardless, one or the other guy will fall. The under makes sense to me, if you want to play it that way. And then the knockout on either side makes sense to me if you want to play it that way as well. But I'm going to be in the Izzy camp very, very firmly. Folks, that's UFC 281.